Oh my God. So good. So fluffy. Baking bread at home can be a little bit intimidating, but it's getting more and more popular every day. We have a ton of bread recipes to choose from, but each of them requires specific pieces of bread making gear. Lisa and I are gonna show you some of our favorite bread making tools to help you in your quest for the perfect loaf. First up, Hannah. So we tested eight dry food storage containers and this brand from Cambro won. And it was just super easy to use. The markings were clear and simple. The lid was simple. It's super rugged. And it also it perfectly stores a five pound bag of flour, which is a standard size in America. So you can just dump your flour in there and then you can access it really easily. This is actually a really tidy way to store dry goods but it's also awesome for baking bread. Often the recipe will say, you know, leave for two hours or until the loaf is doubled in size. Well, it's like, I can never remember what it looked like in the first place. So this, you can actually go by the measurements. You know, you can watch it expand and track when it's actually doubled in size, which is super handy. All right, so I am doing one of our easiest bread recipes. It's called almost no need bread. Last night, I mixed together dry ingredients, flour, salt, and yeast with water, a little bit of vinegar, and a little bit of beer. That's it. Mixed it together till it was shaggy. Honestly, it didn't look that good. I was a little bit worried about it, but it looks great today. So you wait like eight to 18 hours. So it's been about 18 hours for me. Dump it out onto a floured surface. It's called almost no knead because it asks you to knead it 10 to 15 times right now. So there's the almost. So after you knead it, you put it onto the parchment. The parchment helps it not stick to the Dutch oven. And this is our winning parchment paper right here from King Arthur. We tested 10 different brands of parchment paper. You know, some were rolls, some were pre-cut sheets. Some of the pre-cut ones were too big, so you're still cutting it down to size. It doesn't make it any easier. Um, this one is like, ooh, it's like a perfectly tailored suit. You whisk it out, you put it right in the rim baking sheet, and it fits perfectly. Okay, I think that's been 10 to 15 needs. This has a little bit of oil on it. Put the dough right here like that. This parchment paper truly is one of the best winners, one of my favorite winners we have. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. So the next piece of bread baking equipment I wanna talk about is a Dutch oven, which if you are a fan of ATK, you know we love our Dutch ovens. I have our winner here by Le Creuset. I actually did this testing. I got some serious guns in this testing because if you've ever hefted a Dutch oven, you know they're really heavy. Um, we tested 10 cast iron models and one ceramic model. And I included the ceramic model because it was lighter and I thought maybe it would have the same heat retention properties, but it wouldn't be so hard to lift. But unfortunately, ceramic is fallible and I actually broke the lid when I was washing it in the sink. So we really think it, cast iron is worth it for a Dutch oven. You get that superior heat retention um, and it's not gonna break in the same way. Of all the models, I tested primarily enamel coated ones, which is actually, it's a kind of glass um, on the surface here. Le Creuset, our winner, has some gorgeous colors. It's probably the most fun part of buying a Le Creuset, picking out the color. But we also have a Best Buy from Cuisinart that was really good. And we also tested the Amazon Basics model, and it was pretty darn good too. Um, I tested one model that was uncoated, um, just a classic lodge, like what a, a cow poke might have on the range over a fire. And I actually loved that one too. You know, for usability reasons, I do prefer a light interior. Let me show you this. The interior here is this sort of beige color and you can see into it better. So like if you're browning chunks of beef in uh, one with a black uncoated interior, it's hard to see like, is it over browned? Is it, is it beautiful? You know, you can't tell. With these, you can really gauge the browning better. That said, the uncoated classic lodge model uh, made gorgeous bread. It was really good for browning. Um, and that is why we really love Dutch ovens for this recipe of almost no need bread because um, some professional kitchens actually have steam ovens. And what that helps with is spring. It helps the loaf of bread spring up. Um, so when you use a cast iron Dutch oven in a bread recipe, you're actually creating a mini steam oven because the steam from the bread cooking can't escape and the, and the lid is so heavy and the whole thing retains heat so well. So you're creating a mini steam oven, which is super cool. And then you put it in for 30 minutes for this recipe with the lid on and then you take the lid off for the second 30 minutes and you get that gorgeously brown, crusty exterior. The next stage where this Dutch oven is gonna come in super handy, I'm gonna take the lid off and I am going to put, pick this up with a little sling and put it right in here. 
So as you'll see, this is uh, paper and it might kind of wig you out like, oh my God, you're putting paper in the oven, but this is heat safe to a higher temperature. It's not going to burst into flames. So don't worry, it will get a little darker. It will get discolored, but don't worry. You're not gonna burn your house down. Well, you might, but it won't be the parchment's fault. So at this stage of the recipe, we cover this and we set it aside for two hours or until the loaf doubles in size and doesn't readily spring back when poked with a finger. Um, so this needs two hours, but yesterday I actually made another loaf so I could show you all the results. Let me go get it. I have it here on our winning cooling rack. You really have to use a cooling rack. If you just put it on a surface that isn't ventilated like that, it's gonna get soggy. You really need that airflow. So I'm gonna do a little knock knock right here. Ooh, you can see it's nice and hollow. The bottom is gorgeously browned and not one bit soggy. And that really comes down to using a cooling rack. So this is our winner here by Checkered Chef. We love that grid pattern and it's super durable. So that's why it won our testing. Now let's check out Lisa's favorite bread gear. So when you're baking bread, um, you can do measurements of flour and water and all those things with measuring cups. But what makes it super, super easy and way more precise is to use a digital scale. And this is our favorite. It's by OXO. We tested 10 digital scales and we did all kinds of things testing their accuracy and how easy they were to use and clean. This one is our winner. It's been our winner for quite a while. So one of the things we love about this scale is the platform. It comes right off for cleaning and it's stainless steel. It's very easy to wipe clean. And once it's clean, you pop it right back on and that's it. The other thing we love about this scale is this part out front. The controls are all in the front and it has this little pull out reading. If you have a great big bowl on here and you can't see the reading underneath the edge of the bowl, you're not down there trying to read it. You pull it right out and it slides right back into place. It's also got a super dead simple control panel. It has a button that just changes between pounds and grams. So you can just switch in one second between the two measurements. A lot of the scales we tested had these little tiny switches buried deep in the workings and you had to choose one or the other almost for all time because it was such a pain. This is in one second flat. So I'm going to be measuring the things that I need for our almost no need sourdough 2.0, which was a recipe that we developed during quarantine this past year. Um, we kept making improvements on it. Our test cook, Andrew Jenjigian, uh, is a bread expert. He now has his own blog called Word Loaf. And he developed this recipe to use just a tiny amount of flour for your starter. Because if you remember, flour was kind of hard to get. So this is my tiny starter. It says day one, April 2nd, 2020 on it. And I've kept it going for, you know, all these months because it's so easy. So we call for one and a quarter cups plus two tablespoons or 11 ounces of water at 70 degrees. I actually have my measuring cup. Now, rather than trying to measure out one and a quarter cups and two tablespoons, that's not that hard, but this is so much easier. I put it on here, I zero out my scale. I can pour this in right until it says 11 ounces. So there we go, that's exactly the amount of water I need. And the scale made that so easy. I'm zeroing out the weight of my bowl and I'm supposed to be putting in three and a third cups of flour or 18 and a third ounces or 519 grams. So easy. I'm just dumping the flour in there till it reads the right amount. Boom, I did it. Um, <laughs> so that's my flour. I've already measured out a teaspoon and three quarters of salt, just table salt, it's going right in there. So now here comes the fun part. Here's the next tool that I invested in that made bread making so much easier. This is called a dough whisk. And it's just this spiral, it's a little swirl. This one's by King Arthur Flour, it's our favorite. And you're gonna use this to mix the ingredients. At this stage, if you were mixing these, it's, you've got your water, your flour, your starter. It just is very gummy, it's very sticky. It's gonna get all over your hands, all over your wooden spoon. You're gonna be spending all this time trying to scrape it off. And honestly, you end up losing some of that precious dough that you don't wanna lose. You wanna make that into bread so you can eat it later. So the first stage of this recipe is you're adding that water to a big bowl. And then you're adding your starter to that. And here is my sourdough starter. It's about two ounces. I'm using our favorite little jar scraper by Get It Right, G-I-R. This is 
great because it's really pretty good at swooping up every last little piece of that. If you're measuring it down to those precise amounts, you want it all to come out of the bowl. I've got my water with my starter in it, my salt and my flour. I'm gonna use this dough whisk to mix that together and just get the salt kind of distributed through the flour. And now I just put the two things together. Now, if you use a wooden spoon or your hands, this just gets to be a mess. It gets all over everything and um, it doesn't mix that well and you waste a lot of flour and dough. So this dough whisk, is this is the genius moment of this thing. You're putting this in and it blends the wet and dry very effectively. It's so much easier and the dough whisk comes clean without wasting any of the precious yummy dough that you're making. I've mixed the dough till it's pretty moistened, most of the flour and water, and it comes pretty clean. That's it. I don't have, you know, half my dough going out with a spoon. Okay, so at this point, you're just gonna make, mixing it by hand until all the dry ingredients are incorporated. This recipe does not call for a stand mixer. You'll think, a lot of people think you need a stand mixer to make bread. You do in some cases, I and mean, here's my stand mixer right back here. We tested tons of stand mixers. We use them on bread. Our winner is the KitchenAid 7-Quart Pro-Line, and the inexpensive choice is the KitchenAid Classic Plus 4.5-Quart. Both of those are great, and they're really good for certain kinds of recipes. Bagels or bagel bread. Um, it's a very stiff, very dry dough that has to be kneaded for 10 solid minutes. And unless you're a glutton for punishment, Get your stand mixer. Um, very high hydration doughs that are very wet and sticky. Also good to do in a stand mixer because otherwise you're just gonna be coating yourself in dough and it'll be a mess. A lot of our recipes, you know, your hands and a bowl. So this dough is now in sort of a rough ball. It's shaggy, as they say. So what I like to do at this stage is just cover it with our favorite plastic wrap, which is nice and clingy. It's called stretch tight. You can do this or you can put it in a cambro as Hannah did. At this step, another choice that's more environmentally friendly than plastic wrap would be the Abigo Bees Wrap that Hannah talked about in our episode on plastic alternatives. And I'll just write the time on the top and then I know when to come back and look for this bread to be doubled in size. And it'll be slightly domed, a little bubbly. It'll just look like really nice dough and it's ready for the next stage. So this is a sheet of King Arthur parchment paper that I have cut into a 12 inch square um, because that makes a round, you know, a, an even shape to drop into the Dutch oven. And then at this point you can use vegetable spray. I just use a little bit of olive oil and a pastry brush. This is our winning pastry brush by OXO. It's a silicone pastry brush. Um, and I just brush the little piece of parchment with my olive oil. And this is going to drop the bread right into a red hot Dutch oven which I have heating up in my oven. I just took this colander out of the fridge. My dough's been in there for 12 to 24 hours. And um, this is our winning colander by RSVP Endurance. It's a stainless steel colander. This is the larger size that we call for when we're gonna put it in a full-size Dutch oven. My Dutch oven is a little small and I have the smaller colander. So the same dough, it just goes in a smaller shape. It makes it a little taller, but it makes the bottom fit into my smaller Dutch oven. And this is the same piece of plastic I used on the bowl, so I'm not wasting plastic. And so there it is, it's all beautiful sitting right in there. I will show it to you. And that's all ready to go. And I'm just gonna take that greased parchment, put it right there and flip it over and peel off my towel and there it is. And now we are going to do an exciting thing. <laughs> We're gonna do the slashing. This is called the lom, and it's a tool that bread makers use to get those nice little slashes in bread. And what that does is release the tension of the surface so that as the bread rises, it's able to split apart and create those yummy zones where there's crispy ridges and sort of stretched looking parts. And you'll often see people do very decorative sourdoughs. This is what they're using to cut a pattern into this dough. It's almost formed a skin on top. So you're gonna release some of that so that the bread can really blow up. It's basically a razor blade, old school razor blade on a stick. This one's shaped like a little bread loaf, a baguette. It's 
by Breadtopia. It's our favorite. We tested several of these and we like this one the best. Found it the easiest to use, to change the blades, and to just keep going with. So it's great. Um, you don't want to cut straight down. You want to cut in at a kind of a 45 degree angle. And you want to go about a half inch in because you want to cut through that sort of toughened skin and let this thing expand. And when you cut in at a 45 degree angle, you get that little lip that's crispy and that I really love. Um, if you want to make other cuts, you can make very precise little cuts in a decorative pattern and they will open up. But for a main cut like this, 45 degrees. Just I'm going straight across the loaf at a 45 degree angle, about a half inch in. And uh, there it is. So the lam, it's spelled L-A-M-E like lame, but it's pronounced lam because it's French. I am going to take this now and get my red hot Dutch oven out of my oven where it's been preheating for an hour. And I'm going to drop this in and put it back in the oven. So this is my super hot Dutch oven taking off the top. I'm using the parchment as a sling. Now, unlike Hannah's recipe where she's putting it in to a cold Dutch oven, this one goes in hot. And you take the bread out to slash it and get it ready to go right from the fridge so it's cold. And that makes a difference. So I'm gonna put this in the oven and we'll take a look later on. Here's my finished loaf. Isn't it cute? Um, I really think that making this bread is so much, it's so, um, what's the word? I, it's kind of fulfilling. You feel like you've done something and you get something delicious to eat. So I really don't mind that sourdough is kind of an investment. You're growing starter for a long time. You're messing around trying to get it to the point where it will really rise a loaf of bread. If you want a faster, easier one, that almost no need bread that Hannah made, Anyone can do it and it's super delicious. But this one, it takes a little more dedication and time to getting it all together. Once you've got it, it's very easy. Um, so isn't it cute? And you can see across the top here, that was that single slash I made. Look how much it opened up and allowed this bread to expand and rise and gives you this nice little crusty edge here that's just so good. So it just looks pretty and uh, you know, it looks fancy even though all I did was cut across it. I love that kind of thing. So here it is. And I've got our trusty bread knife. Oh my God, so good, so fluffy, so soft inside and crusty on the outside. And I eat the heel because that's my favorite part. That's so good. So I think this bread is delicious. And all those little tools that I talked about, the lom, the whisk, the scale, they made it easier and they made it more efficient. And they just kind of helped me level up my bread game. So like I said, I was a little bit intimidated to bake bread, especially stuff that's gonna be shown on video, but it was really easy and fun and rewarding and the bread looks good. So I'm super excited. So if you're a novice like me, I would suggest starting with the multi-use gear, you know, invest in a Dutch oven. It's great for a million different things. Same with cambros, cooling racks, parchment paper. Um, these aren't one trick ponies and honestly, just have fun with it. Like Hannah said, those multi-purpose tools like the Dutch oven is a great place to start. But as you start making more bread, and I've been doing this for a long time now, a few of these extra pieces of equipment really make a difference. And the end game is a great loaf of bread. So for the recipes that you saw us bake today, go to americastestkitchen.com. And for more information on the products we talked about, check out the links below. Yes, and please ask us any of your bread tool related questions in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Mm.